The threads in a Java application are managed by the Java Virtual Machine. Since the Java Virtual Machine is typically run on top of some host operating system, it has been designed according to the threads model of that host operating system. Therefore, the uh, threads in a Java application are following that uh, host operating system's uh, threads model. When you're uh, developing a multi-threaded Java application, there are two different uh, styles or uh, mechanisms that you can follow. Actually, we will see that the second approach has a, a more modern uh, style that we're going to discuss uh, in a few minutes. So for the first approach, what you do is you extend uh, the thread class uh, and overwrite its run method. Uh, so whatever you implement in this run method is the code that's being executed by the thread. For the second approach, which is uh, the preferred approach, you implement the runnable interface in a class. So, uh, for example, you first create a class that implements the runnable interface. In this example here uh, in the slide, uh, for example, we're creating a class with the name task. Of course, you could give any name you wish, but it should be implementing the runnable interface. If you're implementing the runnable interface, the interface enforces that you implement a method named run. In other words, you're overriding that method. Again, uh, inside this method, whatever you write, that is the code to be executed by the thread. Of course, you could be calling other methods from the run method, but uh, the thread starts with the run method. Then, according to the older style, you would be creating an object of the uh, thread class, but instead, with the newer executor framework, you create an executor and you invoke that executor's execute method by passing it an instance uh, of the runnable class. Okay, so for example, uh, since we have uh, created the class uh, task uh, as uh, implementing the runnable interface, you, we first create a, 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 an executor using new executor and assigning it to a variable, let's call it service of type executor, and then exec run its execute method by passing it an object of the class we have created, which was implementing the runnable interface. However, this approach, what we discussed in the previous slide, it, it creates a, a thread in which you can do something, you can execute some task, but this approach does not return anything to the main thread. If you need to uh, return something from the thread you have created to the main thread, then you need to do something different. The problem arises from the fact that in Java, you don't have a global variable. Java is a completely object-oriented programming language, so you don't have global variables to work with. Therefore, we cannot return uh, a value uh, through some global variable as we did for example remember in the uh, variable sum here remember the sum variable was defined as a global variable in C so our runner method here was making modifications on the sum variable which was global so this way we were passing information from the thread uh, to the main thread. That's not possible in Java. So you have to do it in a different way. How you do it? This is an example of how you can do it in the slide. 
you should first import the Java Util concurrent uh, package and we create a class let's call it summation of course again uh, you can give any name as you wish which implements this time not the runnable interface as we did in the case where we don't need to return anything but instead we uh, create a class which implements the callable interface now callable takes a generic type so in this example we're trying to return an integer value an int value so you have to use of course you cannot use the int uh, type uh, which is a primitive type but you need a class name therefore we uh, create callable of integer therefore the callable interface since it enforces us not to this time implement the run method but it requires us to implement the call method the call method in this case would be returning a value of type integer class and in that class we do whatever we want and return that value in this example again we're taking the sum of values from one to upper therefore uh, we have we define a local variable find the result whatever the result is we create an object of type integer initialized to that value we have just found and we're returning this object of type integer uh, through the call uh, method uh, we also uh, create another uh, class let's call it driver which will make use of this uh, summation class so there we create an executor service uh, type uh, variable and initialize it using the executor class's new single thread executor uh, method. Uh, this method will return a value of type uh, called future which again takes a generic type in our example we were trying to get an integer value so the type here will be again integer and this variable which will contain the result that comes from the um, from the uh, thread that's created is initialized by calling the submit method of this variable here we created of type executor service and to that again we pass uh, a value uh, which is actually an instance of the class we have created here of type this time summation uh, now to learn the result uh, of the uh, thread we make use of the result dot get method so you make use of the get method to retrieve the result note that calling get may cause the interrupted exception or the execution exception could be any one of these you need to catch uh, this uh, uh, exception and do something in this example we just uh, chose to ignore that exception we are not going to take any uh, action if the exception occurs but if you need to do it then you should be handling the exception here so just to wrap up if you don't need the a value returned from the thread you create a class that implements the runnable interface and implement its run method on the implementation side of the thread 
and on the caller side you create an executor say new executor and assigning it to a variable of type executor and then call that variables that objects execute method by uh, initializing it with an object of the class you have created here but pay attention this does not return any value from the thread the thread does whatever it needs to do for example if it's writing to a file it's written there so from the other side you can read it no problem but it won't get a return value if you need a return value then you should be doing it this way so instead of uh, instead of the runnable class you should uh, the runnable interface sorry you should be implementing the callable interface which takes a generic type the type that you want to return you should implement the call method instead of the run method and instead of creating an executor you should create an executor service which is initialized by calling executors that new single thread executor we will later be talking about this again this is related to uh, thread pools we'll come to that when uh, when it's time and you should create a variable of type future which takes again a generic class we were planning to return an integer so this should be future of integer which is initialized by the submit method of the executor service we have created here and that takes this time uh, an object of the class we created here which implements the callable interface and to get the value to retrieve the value you should be calling the get method on this future variable and don't forget to catch the possible exceptions uh, this get uh, could cause.